in trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, the, the, thought, the first thought that I had was, okay, if you really believe there's a God and that the duration of this life is a rounding error, shouldn't you just go be a missionary? They're the best Christians, right? Then you have your pastors. They're like your second best Christians. You know, they're not out in the field, but they're like doing God's work. And then you've got like your business people who could donate to all the people doing the real work. Obviously, that paradigm is completely wrong. And as I was going through this process of trying to figure out what I was supposed to do, I felt God tell me very clearly that, Victor, every believer is called to be a missionary and business is your mission field. During this time, I felt pretty clearly that God was telling me to start a company, but I was at my final rounds with a firm out here on the West Coast that I really wanted to work for. They were gonna pay half a million dollars as a 22 year old. <laughs> but when I got to the airport, my flight got delayed for an hour. And I was just sort of sitting there praying and just thinking, um, I just heard a very strong voice say, Victor, you're being a huge coward. You know, you know exactly what you're supposed to do, but you don't have the courage to do it. And I was very convicted on the spot, realizing the truth of that voice. And from the airport, I called all these places that I wanted to work at, and I told them I was sorry for wasting their time and having them fly me out and do all go through all these things, but I had to withdraw. I knew at that time that I was going to be an entrepreneur for at least the next 10 years of my life, maybe longer, maybe forever. Um, but I had no idea what would happen. I certainly would not have pictured, for instance, what Five Stars is today at that time. I would not even have had the audacity to picture <laughs> something like this. Victor, first of all, welcome. Hi, so you are essentially, for example, Starbucks. Everybody knows you go, you get points and mm -hmm. numerous companies. I just pulled out Starbucks as such, but there's numerous big companies that offer these kind of loyalty points. Mm -hmm. You are solving a problem for smaller businesses, which really had no easy way to do that. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So most big businesses, they have entire marketing teams working to create loyalty offers and promotions and to target all of their customers because they know the most valuable thing for their business is to make bring their customers back. Back again. Five Stars provides a rewards and marketing platform for local business owners. When you pay with your credit card, you can sign up for this rewards program. And as you leave that store, as you come back to that store, as we communicate to you when you're outside of the store, we can talk to you in a personal way. I was working at Facebook and come through the IPO and Five Stars just randomly reached out one day over LinkedIn. They had just raised a Series A funding of, uh, I think it was like $14 million. And, and through the course of the conversation, I realized that Victor was a person who followed Jesus. What I really enjoy about how Victor has brought this company to light is that he doesn't harp on the faith aspect, but he's instilled it in each one of us because we all understand that there is a foundation here that we can thrive off of. Victor is um, a Christian. Uh, Matt Doka, our other co-founder, is a Christian. But they don't make it weird. If you believe that, you know, we are the reflection of Christ, then you're just you're just trying to be yourself in some visible way. But it, it, it doesn't have, like, an ulterior motive. It's not calculated. And so when I think about what I'm trying to do at Five Stars, I'm trying to create an environment where people can be authentic to who they are, however they were made to be. And so if you want to create an environment where people are really comfortable bringing themselves, their whole selves, then you have to bring your whole self, right? The, the parts of yourself where you're worried if you show it, people might not like you. And a lot of the biggest things God has done here have been through, you know, my personal failings and shortcomings. I applied to Five Stars because I believed in the mission, I believed in the values, and that's what attracted me. And there wasn't really quite a fit for me based on my skill sets, and so they actually created a position for me in internal communications and project coordination. Unfortunately, after being here for about eight months, my role got eliminated, and I was laid off, uh, and that really sucked. My husband and I had just bought a house, the 
then we closed the day after I got laid off. So I was, I was kind of freaking out. I was, felt really ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I was scared. I made a series of suboptimal decisions. We had to let go of, you know, a good 50 people at that point in time. And the best practices, of which there are many, are generally to wrap it all up in the neatest package that you can, right? You announce it in a very firm and crisp way. You get the people affected out the door. You lay out a clear, clean, exciting vision for all those that are still around. And you just try to kind of try to move the company forward. I had written this speech that conforms with all the best practices. But as I was praying through this process, I, I realized it's really in sort of these moments that, you know, that, that the most value can be created, that people are actually taking the time to, you know, take a step back and think about their life, think about bigger picture things. And perhaps the, the most valuable thing Five Stars ever does in our entire history would be executing a layoff well. But I was feeling so upset, I decided to write a diary entry. And I, I don't keep a diary ever, but I, I decided to write this entry and it, it basically starts with talking about how bad I feel for, you know, what, what's happening, but also at the same time, how necessary I felt it was because of this, this confidence and excitement I realized I did have in the future it enabled. And as I was, you know, going up to the podium to sort of announce this to the company, um, I, I was very, I was very com compelled that actually the, the, the sterile, every, you know, the sterile best practices speech was not at all what I was supposed to deliver, but it was, I was supposed to read my diary entry. It was not at all pretty, you know, I was, I was definitely crying up there, but I, I felt like those are the exact situations that are the richest, right? It's, it's really when things are not going well that, you know, who you are is, is on display and those are the greatest opportunities to um, to create uh, or reinforce the culture. I very much admired the way that leadership went about praying about this decision, how they um, executed. We encouraged the entire company to go down and, um, and hug them and help them pack their desks. Victor wrote, he personally went onto every person's LinkedIn profile and wrote a paragraph or two about their personal work and how they contributed to the company. We helped to, you know, get their resumes out there and we helped to update them and try to connect them to our network and as a team, you know, as, as an entire company facilitate their next transition. And just, you know, a, a, a long host of, of little things that I would say are not at all best practice, but I found out, I found to be a lot richer, you know, and in people even crying together or mourning the situation together a lot more humanity than if you just tried to do it cleanly. I had this sense of peace for a couple of weeks, and um, by the third week, I opened up my computer to change my status on LinkedIn to prepare for job searching, and literally, when I opened my computer, Claudia, our VP of People, called me, and I was surprised at first. I was thinking, did I get in trouble? What? Why is the VP calling me? And she actually called to offer me a job. She had an opening on her team uh, for a recruiter. She saw um, skill sets in me and a personality and potential in me that could become a great recruiter that I didn't even know was in me. The output of this company is not just profit. Every company has values on their wall and on their website, but a lot of times they're just words on a wall. But here, we actually do live them out here. When I think about our duty as Christians, I, I really think about two things. Uh, first is the Great Commission, which we're explicitly called to. Um, and then there's this concept of work, restoring the world to a pre-fall state around human flourishing. You know, I, I'm Christian, but it's certainly not a Christian company. And so for me, it was just figuring out, okay, how do I reflect the Great Commission? How do I reflect human flourishing in whatever it is that we're building?